Welcome to the Web Information Systems class. I'm delighted you have chosen to take this class. Um, Tanvi Banerjee and I will be the instructor, instructors for this class. Most of the classes will be conducted by Tanvi and a, a number of other uh, instructors that might help you to deal with a variety of uh, topics we will cover. This course is part of the uh, Big and Smart Data Sciences Certificate. Uh, so those of you who are registered for 7,000 level credit would uh, be getting credit for that certificate program. Um, the way we are going to teach this class um, is called flipped classroom. So most of the classes would have three components. Uh, before the class, um, you would be watching a pre-recorded online video and uh, other related materials. Uh, during the class, um, there will be discussions. Um, so you have to come prepared with um, the before the class component of this uh, course and, uh, and you know come with your questions and we'll try to answer them in the class um, and um, during the class we'll also have some exercises so uh, in the supervised manner so you'll be able to um, ask questions uh, so you'll be able to carry out those exercises and uh, ask uh, you know request consultation for uh, with the instructor who will be out there available to answer your questions uh, for many of the classes, you will also have um, uh, exercises uh, which will be graded. Then we will talk to you in more detail about uh, how the grading process will work. Now, um, in the first module of the first class, uh, let me go over the preliminaries and the objectives of, for this class. <coughs> what you um, uh, would have observed, and if not, you should notice, is that um, there is huge growth in amount of data um, uh, that uh, on the web, on the uh, and and due to all the things that uh, happen uh, around the web, so um, you can see the, in this chart and uh, the amount of data has grown uh, substantially over the period of year. One of the statistics sh says that there is as much data in the last two years um, as there has been before. Uh, for the entire history before that, right? So in every two years, kind of, we might be doubling the inform data uh, that is made available on the web. So with all this data, it becomes very hard for people to make decisions, for applications to use just the right amount of data for uh, achieving whatever purpose the applications are built for. And um, uh, there are a number of reasons why um, this data is growing. Um, Earlier in the web, there used to be web pages, and the uh, uh, the content uh, was primarily textual content. Those are the web standard web pages you had. Uh, more and more uh, multimedia data uh, came up. Today, if you see the largest amount of traffic on the web is video traffic. Um, in addition, uh, somewhere um, between the time the web started and um, now. Uh, there was an evolution of what we call today social web, uh, the social networking sites, and um, uh, the amount of data that were created by these social networking sites uh, started to exceed the data that were created uh, uh, before these uh, sites came into existence. And today, there is yet another, um, uh, you know, significant new sources of data that is coming. It's called Internet of Things. This is the devices and the sensors that. Um, uh, are able to collect the data all around um, in your our you know uh, around the uh, world um, about let's say climate and about the weather. Uh, then there is data around uh, you know that that uh, are uh, collected by sensors uh, on human bodies, and then there are sensors within human bodies that uh, can also collect the data. There is an ingestible uh, pill that really uh, that basically um, uh, uh, captures video going through the GI track of a human uh, and um, and there are other um, uh, devices uh, for example that deal with cardiovascular systems and so on and so forth so all these are creating massive amount of data and this data is becoming again available through the web um, and that is the latest growth in the data in 2008 or around that time we exceeded the capacity to store all the data that we created. Uh, before that, we had enough disk spaces, um, a space that uh, we could store all the data that was created. But now, so much more data is created that we don't even, uh, we can't even store that. That means either you use that data almost immediately or lose it. Right? So that makes uh, for another challenging problem. Um, now, um, 
in, in here is you can see one statistics more data has been created in the last three years than all the past 40,000 years. Okay. Um, the course objective, uh, and, and what you should notice is that uh, the term we use is web information systems. Uh, it's a part of you know broader challenges dealing with large amount of data. The word information is very important. Um, the web itself, for example, uh, one of, there are a number of definitions of the web, but uh, the definition of the web that uh, Tim Berners-Lee, the father of the web, has used is the World Wide Web is a universe of network accessible information and uh, embodiment of human knowledge. Okay. So it has basically become the largest repository of documents and data and the lar largest source of information and knowledge. Uh, d you know, notice these three terms, data, information, and knowledge. So with regards to uh, this object, uh, you know, th this, the scope of the web, what we want to do is um, to um, understand how do you effectively access and utilize all this data uh, that is made available on the web, how do you build data-centric web applications, and how do you convert uh, the data into information. It's so it is the information that humans use to make decisions. It is the information that humans use to take an action, right? So it's very important. The data by itself, as I'll show you in the next slide, uh, has much less value compared to the information. So uh, there is uh, that particular aspect that we'll be looking at. How do we build and share um, uh, and, and, and uh, you know, uh, utilize the knowledge? Uh, that is another uh, kind of uh, topic that we'll deal with. So here I, um, on this slide, I introduce uh, to you s an essential uh, part of the terminology. Um, uh, at the bottom of this pyramid that you see on the right-hand side, you will see that um, there is uh, data, right? And um, uh, here's an example of the data. Uh, raw data is uh, something that might be like this, right? Um, now, um, the data basically stands for symbols, signals, stimuli, observation facts. So, um, for example, the data uh, would be, um, let's say, um, eight. Uh, and it, that eight happens to be um, by itself not very meaningful until you know that that eight is uh, the uh, degree Fahrenheit temperature right now as I speak, right? Um, so, um, uh, by itself, uh, the, the, uh, the number eight, uh, which is what the data is, is not very, very meaningful. Right? And uh, hence, um, uh, the need for thinking about uh, information. So in the example, um, you know, the raw data was something that was captured by, um, uh, let's say, uh, a video recorder, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, traffic. But the information could be, and the meaning of that data could be that uh, there is south-facing traffic light on at the corner of Pitt and Geo Street uh, that turned red. Right? Um, so the and that is information. It uh, is something that you infer from the data. Um, it gives meaning and the purpose to help answer questions like who, what, where, how many, when. So here, uh, what uh, you know, the what is uh, that uh, that light turned red, right? Um, now, once you have this information. Uh, you can, you know, th you can use the data in a lot more meaningful way, and hence the emphasis on information rather than just the data. Now, beyond the data in this so-called DIKW pyramid, um, we also define knowledge, that is the information having been processed, organized, or structured, uh, being applied to put in action, um, and uh, it conveys understanding, experience, accumulated learning, right? So, you might have a number of facts, let's say, on a Wikipedia page, uh, but the collective uh, information that a Wikipedia page and Wikipedia as a whole uh, represents is the knowledge, right? It's the collective intelligence uh, that humans have uh, and that they, you know, uh, authored that thing. They organized these Wikipedia pages in um, a variety of ways. They have linked from one information piece to another information piece and so on and so forth. In the, um, and in this, in this also involves representing, you know, looking at the information in a context. Uh, for example, here, uh, of, with regards to the traffic light, it's a traffic light I am uh, driving towards has turned red, right? So that will be the knowledge, 
Right. Now, and then uh, people would actually act upon that knowledge. Uh, so the wisdom is something that you should be doing. Uh, you say if something where you would use your judgment, uh, something that is uh, for the good or bad and things of that nature. So, for example, when you apply that knowledge that the traffic light that I, on the road that I'm driving, that I'm driving towards has turned red, then uh, you would, you know, subconsciously in this particular case decide that uh, I better stop my car and then, you know, uh, you would you'd be applying the brakes and stopping the car, right? So this is a broader context of these very important terms, data, information, knowledge and wisdom. And um, uh, while um, there are, uh, we also, we need to understand how do we use large amount of data, um, uh, we need to understand um, uh, uh, we, we need to equally uh, pay attention to the information, converting this data into uh, things that helps you understand what that data represents, right? Um, uh, and uh, earlier I mentioned that this course is part of our Big and Smart Data Sciences uh, certificate program, uh, and this term Big Data is very, um, uh, uh, you know, hot today, very, very, uh, you know, broadly used today. Um, but um, and with regards to big data, then there are issues of uh, so-called Vs, V for volume, uh, V for uh, variety, V for velocity, V for veracity. And so, uh, you know, in the broader uh, things that are happening today uh, on the web um, uh, and, and in computing in general, we have massive explosion of the data that I mentioned earlier in um, uh, my chat here. Uh, there is a lot of variety of data. So you might have data uh, on the same information, let's say uh, you're talking about a traffic accident. You might have a video that might have captured traffic accident. You might have road sensor data uh, that would tell you that traffic has come to stop or is moving very slowly. And then you might also have um, uh, somebody tweet uh, and say there is, a, uh, ex there is an accident at the uh, corner of road A and road B. Right? So there's a whole variety of data that uh, are there, and you need to be able to do, deal with those data. Uh, there's velocity, the, the rate at which some things reported. There were um, something like 7,000 tweets per um, second, I believe, uh, at the height of Hurricane Sandy. Right? So um, huge, uh, you know, variety, you know, huge, huge sort of uh, uh, rate. Uh, the rate at which the data basically gets uh, generated is pretty high also. There are lies and untruthful data also, that's the veracity information and these kind of stuff are also uh, somewhat relevant to uh, what we are going to uh, talk about in this course after we have de dealt with uh, basic technologies and techniques. So the course plan for this um, uh, uh, for our course is that we would learn, we would learn a uh, an exercise, a variety of techniques technologies and tools that focus on collecting and using data to build rich data and information centric applications. Right? And uh, to, for us to get better understanding, we would uh, have frequent exercises to become comfortable. Uh, so it would be not only um, about uh, presenting, uh, you know, in the class or giving you these video uh, lectures. But it will be, uh, you know, uh, we'll also have hands-on exercises so that you are a lot, lot more comfortable with these techniques and technologies. And then there will be a substantial um, uh, project. Uh, now, um, uh, our class consists of some undergraduates and some graduate students. Uh, and the graduate students uh, will be expected, uh, particularly those who have registered for 7,000 level credit, would be expected to have uh, additional assignments and also they'll be expected to carry out more in-depth, more demanding project um, in this class.